All right, guys, today we're going to be working on a 1988 SR5, and this one just so happens to be my brother's SR5. All right, guys, so as I said, this is my brother's 88 SR5, and this is the classic 4AF engine. So pretty much we're trying to get this car reassembled by today, get it running. He got a Weber carburetor. Do you know what kind of carburetor it is? Uh, I think it's a 32... 36, 36 or no? 36. Oh, it is that one. Okay, so that's the one I usually recommend to everyone on this channel. Um, so if you get a 32, 36, these typically bolt straight up, but uh, we'll see how bolt on it is. You know how it is. Ooh, ooh. Oh, organize and shit. Not a bad way to spend $40,000, huh? I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, okay, so how much was this cost? About $400, right? Uh, yeah, with shipping and everything, it was in tax, it came up like 400 Okay, so not bad. So about $400 for uh, this Weber kit. Like I said, from all the research that we've done, it seems to be straight bolt-on and everything, so we'll see how true that is. Um, but yeah, pretty much uh, this car should be uh, ready to go soon. We haven't worked on it for about, I want to say, a year or something. Because, you know, we're both far away from each other. Probably been longer than a year. Yeah, it probably really has. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but yeah, he has a GTS uh, front seats, rear seats, GTS spoiler, GTS side skirt, and then, uh, you know, 4F engine. So uh, pretty fun. Oh, and then uh, I forgot about that. He painted the uh, side markers lights thing about so pretty fun so yeah we should be getting everything reassembled right now we have the car be off gonna get the rest of the engine reassembled and then uh yeah all right guys so it actually comes with instruction so pretty handy uh comes with adapter plate this is the actual car beat that we're doing this is the throttle cable uh air filter and then uh some more brackets and stuff so i've never done this so it's gonna we're gonna have fun i guess so if it doesn't fit i blame him <laughs> yeah Yep, so uh, first uh, Weber carburetor install. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the engine with my brother real quick. We're gonna get everything installed on the car and then we'll leave the Weber carburetor for last because that might actually take us the longest amount of time. So you have one job and you stripped the bolt. <laughs> I screwed it up. Uh, no pun intended, huh? <laughs> like ignore the fuck up over there. If it's threaded, it's still tight, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's still threaded. If it's threaded, it doesn't matter how it's threaded as long as it's threaded, right? Hey, okay, we put the connections in. I put the connections on the electronic side, connected the trans uh, shifter cable. When you're Reassembling everything, guys, you want to like use the electronic cleaner because there's so much crap and debris that goes into the connectors. So, definitely recommend doing that. I think that's every guy's worst nightmare, bro. <laughs> we got headers for the 4F, but right now we're going to run the stock manifold just so we can see if it's running. And then later on, we'll adapt it because the most important thing is to get this running. So. <laughs> Your, your project over it. <laughs> I'm doing the hard work over here. Yeah, it, it's me against the, the whole SR5. I'm doing the engine, the wiring, this and that. And then you're over here like, uh, uh, oh yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you're like these radiator brackets and hot lights. Somebody ain't going to fasten themselves. I know what's wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> it has no strip and it needs strip. <laughs> Okay, so pretty much we got a lot done. So my brother ended up putting the top shut up <laughs> the, the top caps over here, uh, and the headlights. He managed to strip them and make them stay on forever. It's fine, but I, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. All three of the four bolts are in there. <laughs> yeah. One of them exited the chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got the connections on, pretty much all the connections on, got the motor mounts on. We're going to go ahead and get the assembly on. So we're going to get the rotors. We're going to get this, uh, the brackets, pretty much everything in this general area, put it back together, like the control arms and everything. And then we're going to finally adapt the Weber carburetor. That's going to be our biggest hurdle because we don't know. <laughs> as much as everyone says it's bolt on, we don't know how we're going to run all the vacuum lines and all that shit. So it'll be fun. So, I mean, it just might be something that we're going to have to like... I think some of them we're gonna have to cap off because I don't think we have all the carburetor lines yeah. connected. It looks pretty similar to the OEM one, to be fair though. It looks kind of similar. You mean this one's <laughs> yeah, What once was the carburetor? <laughs> this Frankenstein of a carburetor, yeah. So um, we're pretty much gonna have to take this carburetor, look at how it mounts onto the SR5, and then see how we're gonna route that one. So uh, it's gonna be a lot of trial and error, but let's see if we could even get it to start on that carburetor. And if not, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, let's not get to that part. But, <laughs> but, uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But uh, that's this is the progress for the SR5 right now. At least it looks like a Corolla, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and if it doesn't run, worst case scenario, it's just a uh, very pretty, rusty paperweight. It's fine. Yeah. It's gonna run. Yeah. Happy yeah. thoughts. Yeah, uh, I will, mean, will it into existence? It's uh, fine wood in here because uh, knock on wood. So, we finally got the car on the ground, it's on this beautiful 16 inch wheels. So, right now, we're pretty much going to figure out the carburetor deal. So, I have the instructions here, I'm gonna go ahead and read them, but I'm assuming it's pretty straightforward. This carburetor is going to sit in like this, and uh, this line right here seems to be the same line as this line. However, I gotta figure out what that bottom one goes to. So I'm pretty new to this, so don't judge me. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of recovery, there's an OEM carburetor. Um, my plan is to, once I get this installed, if I got this installed good, I'm going to rebuild this one, make a video on how to rebuild it. I have a rebuild kit over there. But uh, yeah, so pretty much that's what we're going to do. We're going to hopefully try to retrofit this over there. Uh, after lots of hours of frustration, um, so we have the carburetor, the Weber carburetor in right now, but it's not in, it's, you know, framed up right now. Run into a lot of issues, so there's some issues you're into. The throttle cables. So for an automatic SR5, they have two. They have one for the actual throttle and one that goes down to the transmission and they both work in tandem. So essentially what one of our buddies in the A92 groups, uh, Adrian, said basically you'll have to take out this adapter plate and you're going to run the one off of your SR5. So you're gonna adapt it, this plate onto that. And then I'm not confirming everything else yet, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like fuel is going to run all the way to here and we might have to run a regular in between it. So go from here to here. And then I'm still figuring out vacuum. I still gotta figure out what connects here. But I definitely know um, from the sounds of it, from what I've seen in forums is that they cap off most of these vacuum ports. I don't know, apparently uh, my brother stumbled upon uh, this magic hose connection, so it connects to the bottom plate. It clicks. It clicks. <laughs> yeah, it clicks. Well, it's the only one. It's the only hose that looks like it like made sense to connect it to. Yeah, no, it Where makes else sense. Would that yeah, I mean, it fits perfectly too. I didn't think about that. I mean, as you can see, when you get off this plate, uh, that's what we're referring to. So I think I forgot the name of this, but this is so your car can start all year round. I think there's a warming plate of some sort. I don't know. I don't know the name. But typically. In my opinion, I think if you guys are having uh, fuel leaking issues on your 4AF, I think it leaks from this gasket. That's what I could assume. That's actually what I just took off might be why it was leaking. Really? What the hell is that? I There was literally like a carbon buildup. Oh, crap. All right there. So it so might have been that. might have been overflowing fuel. Because he was literally spilling an entire tank out I the front of his car. I literally <laughs> spilled like the whole tank of gas after a car meet just in the parking lot. And it Jesus. wasn't like I drove it for that long. Jeez. So, yeah, so that could definitely be your SU. So right now we're trying to figure out this carburetor thing. Hopefully we can figure it out. If not, hopefully we can find the missing link of a uh, extra carburetor that we have lying around. Cause this one over there is the stock one, but it is opened up and uh, was abandoned as a child. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. His, his dad left for milk and never came back. <laughs> he was doing a rebuild on it and uh, never finished. And I have not taken this apart in years. So I don't know how to, off my the top of my head, how to put it back together and get it firing. So, okay. So those of you going for a 4AF Weber swap, um, it can be pretty complex. So like I said, as before, uh, the, you're going to have two different cables for the throttle. One that goes to the tranny, one goes to the pedal. Next issue you're going to run into is fuel. So you're gonna need a regulator in between this hose here and then here. Uh, you also gotta account for coolant passages that we just found out like literally a couple of minutes ago. There's two holes that go underneath this uh, plate over here. But you're sure that's the coolant? I'm assuming, I don't know yet. I'm still waiting on information, so. Uh, so I'm thinking those two, and then we got to figure out the vacuum that goes to the to here, right there, to that uh that little hose right there. And then uh, once we get that figured out, I guess we gotta adapt this uh the old plate from the carb the stock carb onto here. So bolt on, bolt on, right? 
<laughs> You're so mad. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're just uh, slowly trying to get our information and slowly trying to fabricate this onto the SR5. Not a lot of information out there, but as soon as we figure it out, y'all figure it out. And I don't know if we'll figure it out, but <laughs> you know. We don't know anything. We don't, I don't know anything. He doesn't know anything. <laughs> but we're gonna figure it out. This car has to run. It has to run. <laughs> And at this point, I don't even, like, I'm not going to go find, like, another one. I want this to work. He's like, eh, this one has to work or it's not going to work at all. It's $400. <laughs> Damn. Okay, yeah, we got to get this working tonight. <laughs> it has to work, dude. Okay, if you guys were ever missing that thing that you need on your carbureted 4AF, this is what you need. Uh, I don't know the name of it, but preheater hose. And this is found out Riley's for about $11, $12. You're welcome. Okay guys, so we're back with uh, installing the Weber. We're back with more parts and lots of more knowledge. So pretty much essentially what has to happen is this bracket, we have to make a bracket to extend it for these um, lines, basically these throttle cables to extend a little bit more and then meet with these. This is actually from the original carburetor. So we took it off and put it onto this Weber carburetor. Um, this line in the back that I was telling you about, I couldn't figure out. This line actually goes all the way over here and will route to here. And then we're going to take these two lines and route those two to a solenoid over here, right here. So into these two. And then the rest of the vacuum, we could literally block off. Then this fuel hose is going to go from here all the way to here. And you essentially need to run a regulator, but right now we're not going to run one. And we should be fine, hopefully. Pretty much got the carburetor actually on solidly. So this is the fuel line we're running directly to the fuel pump right here. I had to make a custom bracket. I know it's kind of got off, so I had to make a bracket here and bracket here. Um, so it could, you know, align night at least somewhat decently. So we got that lined up. Pretty much routed the vacuum line back here, all the way over here, and routed these two lines directly to this diaphragm right here. So it's pretty much connected here. Uh, my brother capped off all the other uh, vacuum lines and stuff like that. Yeah, we should be good to go. Uh, we're gonna set up the manual choke later, uh, but for now it should be good. Now it should be good. We're gonna go ahead and try to fire up new gas in the car to change the oil. And then hopefully we're gonna try to fire up, fingers crossed. But yeah, it's fucking cold and it's like one in the morning, but uh, we are dedicated. Forgot to mention, I loosened the bolts to the distributor and I'm going to uh, advance it a little bit. We're supposed to advance, it, I believe, 10 degrees from what I've been told. But uh, yeah, so I got to loose right now so I could change it. Um, I marked where on the distributor is its original setting. So I know when to, what to revert back to. So, all right, guys. So final stage, got the carburetor installed. Hopefully good. We're adding power to it. Oh, God. Don't do that. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Ow. That's a battery die. Okay, cool. Um, so pretty... Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Vengeance. Yeah. Um, so we had the pretty lights on. We got power to the car. We got the radiator, everything. All the accessories installed. Carburetor installed. Custom brackets installed. Um, fuel pretty much everything's installed so uh we just put in new gas we're gonna pray to start so let me put this camera a little bit far away we got the fire extinguisher because uh you know we're not confident in our creation at this point um ready no <laughs> let me close the poke all right go all right yeah pump the gas Yep. Oh, I don't have battery. Fun. Oh. Hold on. Let me try to advance the time. Am I getting fuel? You said what? I said I definitely smell it. I'm not going to press the gas. Yeah, don't. Huh. I tried. I tried. It's going. It's going. Did you have a blue timing or not? Yeah. 
Yeah, I tried moving time and so nothing uh, really changed when I tried. Alright, try to start. Yeah. guys so we got the rubber car running uh oh so freaking hyped so freaking hyped so uh this is pretty much how you did an install i really hope this brought you guys a lot of value because we're freaking happy well, next yeah. is my corolla you want to go over everything first like so that you know everything yeah so i know everything was like oh my god nice yeah i try to do as much small snippet videos as i could so pretty much um all for the fuel routing it's literally from here all the way to here. And um, it's pretty much, you can run a regular in between. That's what some people say to do. We didn't do that, you know, so uh, you can do if you want to. You're gonna need to run this, a bracket of some sort. It's aftermarket or something you make on your own, but pretty much you gotta make it go more to the side and then you gotta use your own kind of bracket from the carburetor, your OEM one. That, that way uh, it could still work because this is an automatic one and it uses two of these babies. So uh, after that, your vacuum's in the back, routes all the way to this diaphragm over here, and then you got two, one, and then one here, and routes all the way down to here. And then that's pretty much it. And But the most important thing, and why we could not get this car started, is these two things. So there's an idling screw right here, and it has to be adjusted properly or else it won't start we tried cranking it for maybe yeah. like five ten minutes we couldn't get it running as soon as i you know went a little bit off and messed with this uh i don't fast saddle screw i believe thing fired up real quick I'm man so real quick i'm so happy i can't i i'm not gonna lie i can't believe we actually got it done <laughs> i can't believe it ran bro oh, no. oh Dude, my god crazy. yo thanks well, so Thanks now everybody. all that we have to do later on is just cap everything. Yeah, we Before have to... The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cap everything and everything. But uh, that's the most important part. But before you we you get it running again, like we ever start again, definitely do our oil change. Yeah. We, you know, we don't know how, you know, bad the oil is. But, woo, guys, that's, right, that's how you do the install. <laughs> so, uh, oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, ignore that. Bleep that out. What? It's almost 1, 2 a.m., but we got it done, guys. So, uh, thanks <laughs> for tuning in. <laughs> ignore that. But, uh, guys, I think the biggest, funnest, awesomest part about this is we didn't have to use this fire extinguisher. <laughs> I mean, that's the real thing we used to be happy about. <laughs>